Sentinel Online. Now loading the Beast Unleashed podcast. This is the Beast Unleashed podcast special interview of Ian Corlett. I am TFG1 Mike, and I am joined by Steve Megatron. Hello. Hello. Yes, and in a few moments we are going to have the astute privilege of speaking with Mr. Ian Corlett, who, as we all know, voiced Cheetor in Beast Wars and Beast Machines. Mr. Corlett has also done a number of other things he is the narrator or the voice um, announcer for the ABC Family Channel. Uh, he was Dr. Wiley in Captain and the Game Master. He's just done a whole bunch of other stuff. Uh, Steve actually f- got the interview for us. It's the only interview so far that I have not had any, uh, any uh, interaction as far as getting it. Yes, that is very awesome. Yes, very, very awesome. Um, so, uh, without any further ado, here is our interview of Ian Corlett, also known as Cheetor. Shields are doing a major fade! Wow! Hey, look at me! I'm a cheetah! N- no, no, I'm Cheetor! Mm, interesting. Interesting? Optimus, the word is spot on smooth. <laughs> it's a crime. Hey, I wonder what these gizmos are for. Time to shred some bread. What do you say we give these new bods a test drive? I am transformed. Hello, and welcome to the Beast Unleashed interview. My name is Stephen Phillips, and I'm joined with one of my Beast Unleashed co-hosts, Mike Blanchard. Hello. Today we have a super awesome privilege to interview Ian Corlett. Yes, sir. That's right. The voice of Cheetor is online with us. Hello, Ian. Hello, everyone. How are you, sir? I'm great. Happy to be here. Very, very cool. Um, Can you give us a quick summary of your upbringing and how you became a voice actor? Um, Well, I was raised uh, in a juvenile detention facility. And, no, I wasn't. Uh, (laughs) But but it sounded like a good story, didn't it? Yeah. Uh, No, I was uh, was born and raised in uh, a suburb of Vancouver, British Columbia, Canada. Um, called Burnaby, and uh, spent my early days uh, as a as a filmmaker. Um, as a young kid, entered a lot of competitions and that sort of thing, and that gave me a real uh, interest in the process and storytelling and animation and all sorts of things. So I'm I'm a bit <coughs> of a unique um, voice actor in the sense that. Uh, I came at it from filmmaking and, you know, did my voices for my own productions and then, you know, kind of found out that I was reasonably good at it. And um, then we didn't really have a film industry and certainly didn't have an animation uh, industry in Vancouver when I was uh, growing up. But eventually um, animation started to come to Vancouver because of some very um, favorable uh, work conditions and union contracts, etc. Mm-hmm. And uh, I was already voicing uh, uh, radio uh, commercials and television commercials and that sort of thing when the work started to come here. And I went, "Hey, look at that! That's uh, that's what I used to do as a kid." So I started. Uh, I think my first my first cartoon here was um, there was several all at once, but one of the biggest ones was. 
Captain N, the Game Master. Dr. Wiley. Dr. Wiley. Yeah, yeah. I remember that show. <clears throat> so uh, that's that's the brief history, and then, you know, that was in the sort of mid-80s when that work started to come to Vancouver, and then um, I just kept working and working and working and working and and uh, actually ended up um, going full circle uh, after lots of success in uh, voice. I started to write for some cartoons, and uh, then from that I sort of spun that into creating a couple of uh, my own series and working on uh, creating series for other people's people's. Man, I sound like a German exchange student. <laughs> um, anyway, um, <clears throat> yeah, so I've uh, I've done a whole lot of stuff in animation. Very, very cool. Awesome. If you could still be working on any one show that you've worked on in the past, what would it be? Ooh, well, <clears throat> boy, that is a loaded question. I gotta say um, that. And this this isn't because I I very recently worked on it because you know sometimes you you have a really good experience and it's the freshest one in your memory. But I, I had an opportunity last year to work on a show called Dinosaur Train for Jim Hen- the Jim Henson Company and PBS, mm-hmm. <clears throat> and <clears throat> it was particularly special because both my kids uh, were cast. As the lead characters in this in this show, and if as if that wasn't enough, I got cast as well. I think mostly because I was the driver and uh, could transport them to the studio. But anyway, mercifully <laughs> they gave me a job out of it. But the the work environment was just so much fun and so uh, great that I, I wanted I want to do more. And it sounds like we will. Now, second to that, because it does seem like a bit of a cop-out to say, oh, yeah, that was the best show I ever did because it was the one I most recently did. But Mm -hmm. it really was magical, really special group of people to work with. It was just really fun. And working with my kids was really neat, too. Now, setting that aside and, um, you know, thinking about the the audience and you guys and (laughs) not trying to pander to you, but... um, <clears throat> I'm, I must say Beast Wars was really fun as well. It was uh, just because it was, it ended up being such a big production. I had no idea. I mean, I knew, I knew what Transformers were, and I, I knew that there was a fan base, but I had no idea that it was kind of like Star Trek, you know? I mean, the, in terms of, of the size and the, and the um, intensity, yeah. Uh, yeah, exactly. The you know the fans are just incredible, and uh, you know it's definitely you know one of the highlights of my career being involved in a show like that. So uh, that would be really high up the list. Yeah. In- in- incidentally, um, if I ha- if I had to pick throughout Beast Wars and Beast Machines, I would have to say, and I, you know, and I'm not trying to just you know impress you or whatever, but Cheetor is my favorite character because of the simple fact that he has such similarities to Rodimus Prime from the original show. Mm-hmm. Um, and, and yeah, Cheetor's awesome. Thank you. I'm you know I I only played a small part in in bringing him to life, but um, I I just wish that they would do um, something with the the Beast Wars uh, characters in the next Transformers movie. Yeah, wouldn't that be fun? I, I don't know if I would want to see that. I, as much as I would love to hear you voicing him again, I don't know if I want to see what Michael Bay does to Beast Wars. That would be kind of scary. So, well, okay, so tell me, um, is that your opinion of both the Transformers movies, or just the last one, or what? It's one of those things where the first one was it was good. It was nice to see that you could adapt it to... Um, live action, and it's nice to see that obviously, I mean, Transformers has this 25, 26 year old history it's nice mm-hmm. to see that they're furthering that I think, but I, I just watching those films back now after, I mean, the first movie's been out two, three years, the second movie came out last year, honestly, I don't like those films 
Mm -hmm. I know I've I have heard this uh, sentiment uh, from others. Um, almost universally, no one, none of the real fans like the second movie. Yeah, uh, no, which I didn't see. Um, and you're not missing anything. It, it's a lot of like they have some more bathroom humor and a lot more uh, expletives in the movie. Yeah, just, yeah, just things that could have been put on the editing floor. Mm-hmm. Well, it's it's funny, you know, and then you think about the other uh, uh, big. Well, they're they're comic book uh, based, but. Uh, the one that uh, comes to mind is uh, is Batman. Mm -hmm. You know where we've had bad ones and really good ones. You know, so I guess I guess it really depends on how the the material is handled. Yeah, it does. Uh, Steve, you want to take the next one there? Um, where would you have liked to have taken your characters? Uh, all the way to the bank. <laughs> a little voice actor humor there. Sorry. Uh, are are you speaking specifically of, um, well, of I mean, the Beast Wars characters, like like Cheetor and uh, and the um, computer? Oh shoot, what's his name? The computer Sentinel. Thing. Sentinel. Thank you. Um, well, just yeah. just in general, are there any characters that 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 say a show ended before you had a chance to develop them more than say you wanted to. Oh, okay, that's <clears throat> that's a very interesting question. Um, you know, uh, it's it's funny when you're <clears throat> as far down the the food chain as we are as voice actors, you you don't you don't really get a chance uh, in my opinion anyway to develop characters too much anyway. I mean, it's, it seems kind of mean to say that, but, uh, you know, we bring a certain amount to the characters, but, you know, when the, when the show is written, um, that's really where the, the real meat of it comes from. And, you know, I mean, I, there's, I'm always sad uh, if a character just kind of, especially if one was really fun, Mm -hmm. And suddenly it's gone, you know. Oh yeah. You, you just kind of want to keep doing it, but it's, in terms of a of an arc or a development, um, most of that honestly comes from the writing, and I have to give the writers complete credit for that. Yeah. Out of all of the characters that you've played in your uh, vast career, who are your favorites? Well, uh, I really enjoyed uh, Andy Larkin from. Um, uh, What's with Andy? That was that was a show that originally started on Fox Kids. I don't know if it really continued in the U.S. too much, but it it got picked up again in Canada, and they did a whole bunch more episodes. So that was really fun. Um, I really enjoyed uh, Coconuts from the old um, Sonic uh, Underground, Sonic the Hedgehog yeah. uh, series. Just because I liked it, it was a fun voice to do. What else? Uh, yeah, I think that was probably my my favorite fun voice, mm -hmm. and it was also a really fun show to work on. I mean, that was with uh, with Phil Hayes and uh, Long John Baldry and uh, Gary Chalk. So it was, and it was pretty much just the three of us in the in the studio, or the well, actually Long John would come in and out, but so the four of us, but. Um, it was pr those were pretty crazy sessions. They were pretty fun. Yeah. Speaking of Gary Chalk, didn't he used to stare at you during Beast Wars sessions? Oh, he didn't just stare at me. Uh, <laughs> he he did a lot of other things that um, involve uh, vapor. Uh, <laughs> just put it that way. Um, he he I, I don't know if he's got some sort of uh, internal uh, digestive issues, but. That man produces far more gas than <laughs> any human really needs to. <laughs> and I, I had the, the joy of standing next to him during all the sessions, and uh, he would, oh, you know, please pull my finger, pull, pull it, pull it. No, Gary, I'm not going to pull your finger. Oh, come on, pull your finger. No, I'm not going to pull your finger. And then he'd pull it himself, and, you know, ha, 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 ha. 
So that was my biggest issue with Gary. Um, I I love Gary. Everyone loves Gary. Everyone he's loves bigger Gary. than life. Yeah. He's uh, he's a he's he is a character. Um, I'm I'm a little um, unusual when it comes to you know stereotypical voice actors because I'm not. Like I'm a performer when I'm in front of the mic and and I've got my lines to do and but I pretty much shut down after that and I I like to at least appear to be somewhat normal yeah and not not that these guys are abnormal <laughs> 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 talking about my peers as if they're on the on a funny farm or something but you know they really are larger than life a lot of them and mm. uh, you, you know while I'm working sure I do I do the crazy voices and. And there is a certain amount of levity and fun uh, that is inherent to to a good voice session. It really should be there, but um, I just tend to uh, to you know do my stuff and you know try to make some jokes and p- make people laugh, and then that's it. Like yeah. what you're hearing right now is pretty much me. So I get I get all sorts of reactions to my personality from why is he so grumpy. To uh, to you know people that that actually enjoy my my sense of humor, but uh, in contrast to uh, to Gary, um, I I usually just like to kind of sit back and mind my own business and choose my choose my uh, spots for for the big gags. But uh, it you know I like to have lots of fun in sessions, and but I also like to get out of there. <laughs> yeah. I like to do my work. And move on to the next one, um, just because you know it, it, it's no fun um, dragging out things longer than they have to be. So yeah. I think I'm babbling now. No, it's okay. Yeah, um, it's fine. What type of you know you talk about your characters, whether you you know you make the jokes or whatever. What type of character do you do you like playing better? Good guys, bad guys, serious characters, or funny characters? Well, it, it's got to be, and this is probably the the answer that you get from everyone it has to be the bad guy yeah uh, and then second to the bad guy or equal to the bad guy would be a really really broad uh, comedic character mm. um, the the choice for me to do Cheetor was really unusual like I, I've I've played heroes before but that was definitely the one that put me on the map as a you know sort of a young hero voice and it was very strange for me because my my stock and trade for pretty much my whole career was the the character voice, the crazy voice, the weird voice. So you know when I'm playing essentially a voice that's me, it's pretty weird. Um, you guys mentioned it when when we first dialed up. You know, it's like, oh hey, you sound like Cheetor. Yeah, I do. Well, well yeah. Uh, it's funny. You there's only two voice actors that I know of yourself. And Barry Gordon, who Barry Gordon played Donatello in the original Turtles series in the 1987 cartoon, he sent his his own voice. That's you know some voice actors have to change their voice to make right. like David Kay has to change his voice to be the me- the uh, Megatron character. Sure. And and you guys don't, which is kind. Of, it, you know, I was like, I, I was thinking even before you messaged us or, or got on the call here, I'm like. Okay, so I know what Cheetor sounds like. I've listened to some of his other promos. I wonder how close his his own voice is to any of the characters. And, you know, you're Cheetor. <laughs> <laughs> I um, know. <laughs> speaking of Cheetor, he had, I believe it was, four different models throughout Beast Wars and Beast Machine. He had the original, the Transmetal 1, Transmetal 2, and then what he was in Beast Machines. Which one is your favorite? The on the on screen? Oh. Yeah. Uh, I liked Beast Machines. That's yeah. my personal favorite. And, you know, again, uh, I've, I've heard much uh, opinion <laughs> on uh, on the various designs and episodes and everything. I think... The reason I liked that was because I really felt that Mainframe and and the the director uh, at that time that was uh, really the creative driving force was uh, Ace Fipke, who um, went on to start his own company called Nerdcore and was very successful and as a producer and a creator of, of shows. But he was really trying to take that what was turning into sort of a, a standard um, 
mainframe 3D animation look, and he was trying to make something different. And uh, and I th- I think he succeeded. In my opinion, it, it was exactly what that show needed um, to kind of give it a new, fresh look and and not make it look like that fluid 3D animation that was so prevalent at that time. Yeah. And uh, he basically made it look like like a moving, uh, immersive comic book, and I really like that. So that's that's the reasons behind my particular choice. Very right, cool. Uh, I think the next one your next one's yours, Steve. Um, how how did you like doing uh, jumping over from regular animation to uh, anime such as Dragon Ball Z? Well, that is a very interesting and very uh, long story. Um, Dragon Ball Z came to me um, as a as kind of a producer. It was really strange. Um, we were working with a company um, in Vancouver called uh, BLT Productions, who was doing some uh, amount of reversioning and revoicing for foreign cartoons. And these guys came, uh, they were from Texas, the, the guys from Funimation. And, uh, they, I mean, they were just not, they didn't look like entertainment people at all. They were, they looked like sort of corporate, um, guys from Texas, you know, super nice people. And they really, they were kind of, somehow they found this project. I'm not really sure what the history, history was behind it, but they found this themselves with this, animation project in their hands and they said we we need to reversion this into english and um we hear that you know you guys know what you're doing so uh between a partner and myself we ended up rewriting uh the very very first uh english version dragon ball z episodes and as a result i ended up i I don't think i cast myself i think i got cast somehow uh as um Oh shoot! What's his name? Goku. Goku. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. And uh, I'm getting old. I'm getting really old. <laughs> I don't remember anything? <laughs> what am I doing? Anyway, so we're we're doing we're reversioning this uh, this Dragon Ball Z series, and I'm going. What? Uh, you know, it's just another series to me uh, that's in Japanese, and and <laughs> dealing with all the things that you have to cut out. Speaking of P, um, there was you know all sorts of just the weirdest stuff in those Japanese cartoons. Anyway. Oh yeah. So I had to. Um, I was I was reversioning it, and you know. So in terms of of the history, I- at least in North America, of Dragon Ball Z. I mean, I guess I'm kind of a founding father when it comes to that stuff. So uh, to answer your question, past th- the history, um, as strictly a voice talent, because I did a whole bunch of it. Um, mm-hmm. Frankly, I just got really tired of it. Um, and it wasn't to do with anything uh, other than the simple, uh, simple economics. Uh, I've, I found that you know I was spending a whole day replicating screams and yells and and like at high volumes and and being absolutely exhausted by the end of the day. And the the company, not BLT. This was not uh, the company I just mentioned. Um, but the group that was uh, that was doing the production and overseeing the production by that time had found their own interpretation of uh, of the union contracts and basically what it meant. Long story short, was you know we were being paid by the line, literally like pennies, and and it didn't <laughs> they didn't even count the um, the loud screams. And of course, as you fans will know, you know in the anime. Mm-hmm. Half the show is a scream of some sort. Oh yeah, they they wouldn't even count those as a line. So they said, "Well, no, no, that, that's a vocalization. That's not any words. You just have to do that. That you throw that in for free." Oh, <laughs> okay. Wow. So then I said, "Well, um, if I'm not going to get paid for vocalizing." I'll just leave those parts out. You can get someone else to do those. So, of course, that was kind of an aggressive stance, but um, I just didn't want to do it anymore. So I, I uh, stopped and uh, have not worked for that company in 15 years. <laughs> <laughs> K- 
Can so you? that's that's my history with uh, with anime, and and really they were the ones that did the vast majority of it. Yeah. Are there any uh, behind the scenes moments during Beast Wars, Beast Machines, or any of the other cartoons that you've done, like Captain N, or anything that you can kind of reveal to us? Um. Well, aside from Gary's flatulence, um, that's and that's ongoing. Any series. <laughs> Pity the pity the person that has to stand beside Gary Chalk. <laughs> um, well, there's that. Let me just think here. Um, y- you know, I should really be prepared with some anecdotes, shouldn't I? If I was uh, if I was a proper uh, voice actor interviewee, but I'm I'm not a proper voice actor interviewee. I'm I'm not very good at this. We still um, love you, man. It's okay. Yeah, well, it's that's cool. I appreciate that. Um, <clears throat> you know, I. I I, I envy, you know, I make fun of Gary, uh, mm-hmm. but I know he's a great interview. And uh, and uh, uh, same thing with Scott McNeil. I mean, those guys just they flip, flick their switch, and uh, and you are the beneficiaries of uh, of the, the greatness that those guys just spew. Mm. I'm kind of um, I, I can't remember things. I don't re- I don't know what I'm doing. I can't remember names. I, <laughs> I don't have stories. I've got nothing. I've got nothing. So I've got a funny story that involves uh, my good friend Gary Chalk. It seems like I'm spending my whole interview talking about him. But (laughs) anyway, it took place at the uh, recording of Sonic the Hedgehog. And one of my uh, special skills as an actor is uh, the ability to uh, rip off a really good belch uh, on cue. And... Uh, often, you know, the, the, it's a thing that comes up so often in cartoons, r- incredibly often. And if I'm in the in the cast, no matter who it's supposed to be, um, they usually just go, "Ian, just get in here and do it," and, and I will jump in and and burp on cue. So this time, uh, Gary thought that uh, he could handle it himself, and he said, "No, I'm gonna, no, 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 I'm gonna burp. It's okay, it's okay, I can do it." So someone gets him a, a coke. And uh, he takes a couple of gulps of it, you know, to, for fuel. And he tries to let out a burp. And, and he, uh, he he vomits. I mean, it's not... Uh, he didn't really puke, but it was like the, the you know, the fizziness of the head of, uh, of oh, yeah. Coke mm-hmm. came gushing out of his mouth and kind of went bleh all over his script. <laughs> and... It, someone has it on tape somewhere, um, and you can actually hear it foaming, and the poor girl that was standing next to him leaping out of the way with a with an eek, um, and uh, that's my that's my one funny insider <laughs> anecdote. Don't get don't allow Gary Chalk to burp on cue. Just get <laughs> get a professional to do it. <laughs> yeah. Next one's yours, Steve. Um, what's the Next one, because you uh, told me to skip the humorous, one. Humorous, bizarre. Okay. What is the most bizarre or humorous audition uh, story you've ever had? Audition? Hmm. Yeah. Um, uh, the last one? There. Some, uh, it, I wish I had a funny one. Um, the ones that I remember are usually really, really, really sad. You know, where you're, you're getting just put through the ringer uh, to try to to get a gig and uh, and it, it's just not working you know and you think well why don't you t- if, if I'm not the guy just tell me to leave you know that's usually <laughs> my attitude um, oh man I honestly I don't have a funny story for you at all on that one that's cool um, which voice actors did you most look up to when you were first starting and which voice actors do you still uh do you look up to that are still around today? Well, um, Mel Blanc, of course, number one. Dawes Butler, uh, it was huge for me because he did so many uh, classic voices, but mostly because he was part of the um, the Stan Freeberg radio uh, comedy gang. And, and I've, mm-hmm. I just found that I had a very similar kind of range to him, so I, I just loved listening to anything Dawes Butler did. 
And uh, in, in terms of living legends, um, I'm happy to say that I have worked with uh, um, Frank Welker uh, before, and he was he was just such a sweet, nice guy. Um, I thought he was fabulous, and of course, incredibly talented. I mean, your your fans will know who all these guys are, but he paid me such a nice compliment. I was working in L.A., and I was kind of the 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 fly-in guy. I was just doing a guest voice on a on a show called uh, Totally Spies, mm. and oh, he was okay. sitting there, and I I was doing my thing, and he, he he was sitting right beside me, and and in between takes, he was kind of kind of going, where where are you from? I I haven't seen you around, and I said, well, that's because I'm from Vancouver. I'm just uh, I'm just in town doing another project right now, and I got hired on this. He goes. Oh, that's why I haven't seen you, because you're really good. And I just about fell over. Like, whoa, Frank Welker wow. said I was good. Wow, neato. But he was really, really a nice guy. And and it's and I uh, I don't want to. I'm just telling that story for th- that very reason, not because he said that I was good. Um, but it was just uh, it was really cool to to meet him, because I mean I, I remember him just forever which voice actors that you've worked with are you uh, closest friends with in real life um I would say yeah, closest friends <laughs> yeah <laughs> that's a good one um uh, I I keep in touch very regularly with um Phil Hayes mm-hmm. he's uh, a guy that I always talk to and kind of like Sort of like extended family, I guess. Yeah. And that, that doesn't always mean, you know, you're really close friends. It's just, no, they're kind of like family, which is, you know, there's sort of a connection there. It's, um, David Kay, I, uh, stay in touch with all the time. Um, and those are two guys that actually moved to Los Angeles. They, they live in LA now, but, um, you know, I'm, I'm probably closer with, uh, with a director. Uh, her name is Andrea Romano. Uh, oh I yes, classify as a very good friend, and uh, she's also in Los Angeles. Maybe there's a there's a pattern uh, happening here. I like to keep my friends as far away as possible. <laughs> um, but those those people I I spend a lot of time with. And you know who's a I'm I am missing out one, uh, Dale Wilson, um, who I think he must have done something on Transformers, but he's he's a He's a well-known voice that you guys will, if you don't recognize the name, if you Google him, you go, oh, that guy. Um, I stay in touch with Dale a lot as well. Okay. We, we just have four more questions for you. Steve, take the next one. Uh, there are lots of uh, different types of voiceover work. Uh, which do you prefer uh, the most out of cartoons, commercials, movies, video games, or anything else in the voiceover world? Um, I love a good commercial. I, I really enjoy doing uh, commercial work. I, you know, they're all they're all fun in their own way. Um, it, it has to be c- probably commercials and cartoons are my favorite. I'm not a big fan of dubbing. I, I, you know, for all the reasons that I mentioned before. Yeah. Um, but it's it's okay. You just you're kind of um, you're kind of hamstrung by by the movement that's there that you have to match, and that's why dubbing often sounds kind of weird because you're really not allowed to act too much. I mean, you try, but um, that's that's the reason it would be lower down the list. Very okay. Cool. Very cool. Uh, okay. Uh, one of my buddies, I had. Uh, it's very rare when, when we do interviews. I try to keep them as secret as possible, and I don't tell anybody. I don't advertise it until after we've done it. Mm-hmm. Uh, with the exception, I usually include most of our co-hosts here on Geekcast Radio Network. So I asked my buddy, I said, "Is there any questions that you would like to ask Ian Corlett that you know that we can ask for you?" And one of them was, "Do Dragon Ball Z fans scare you?" <laughs> No, not really. Um, no, but I, I I was really really um, shocked and amazed 
uh, at <clears throat> the stuff that I saw on the internet, you know, and this is in the early days of the internet, after I stopped voicing Dragon Ball Z, it was like, wow, this is really incredible. Mm -hmm. um, that there's this many people that have such strong opinions on this stuff. But other than that, I mean, they don't scare me. Not at all. It's just like, it, it, I'm impressed. It's, you know, it's kind of neat, actually. Have you, how many conventions have you been to? Because my next question basically states that you've been to some of the various Comic-Con fan conventions and stuff like that. And basically, what is your opinion of these conventions and impressions well, of them? <clears throat> I think they're I think they're great. I, I always... Whenever I have done them, and I don't do a lot of them, I think I've been to a grand total of three, mm -hmm. um, just because, for whatever reason. I just, uh, you know, the scheduling or the opportunity isn't there or whatever. But mm -hmm. every time I come away from one, I think, wow, well, you know, it's really neat that people are so into something. You know, I mean, y you can spend easily spend your life not really being interested in anything. Mm -hmm. And I I always think that that's really fun. And the 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 people that I get a real kick out of, or, or really bring a smile to my face at the conventions, are the kids. Like when you see a little kid uh, coming to one of those conventions, like they're there usually not because their parent is is the fan. It's them. Mm -hmm. And you know, it's it would be like. Um, kind of like going to Disneyland for your first time you know you're immersed in this world that you just love and the, you know that that's pretty Im impressive to me but um, I've been to I've been to uh, bot con in Fort Wayne uh, almost 10 years ago now uh, I've been to one in Vancouver that was just the year before last and then last summer I did uh, a convention in Birmingham, England, called Auto Assembly. Yep. And that was that was really cool. It was the smallest one that I've been to, and the most fun, um, just because of where it was and the the organizers and the you know it was it was good. You're not going this year, are you? No, I I have not been invited. Mm. That's funny because two of your cohorts are the special guests, Gary and Scotty, both. Yeah, that's going to be crazy. We're going, yeah. Um, all right, just one more question. What is it, Steve? In your opinion, how hard would you say it is to make it into voice acting business, and do you have any advice for people who are starting out? Um, don't give up if you feel that you're that you're talented. Uh, don't give up, although. If you keep getting um, the message from, you know, people that, that actually know or you respect, you know, that maybe you should try something else, uh, you have to decide when, <laughs> when that right time to say, I think I'll try something else is. Uh, but until such time, don't give up. You know, it is tough. It's a really tough business to get into, and it's, and it's harder every day to get into it. Uh, because more and more people want to do it. But, um, you know, that doesn't mean it, just because it's difficult or the numbers are stacked against you doesn't mean that you shouldn't try for it. So that's that's my advice with anything to do with uh, in, in life. Um, just keep at it. Don't give up. Before we go, can you, uh, do you want to plug anything, your website, you know, where people can interact with you or anything like that? Um, yeah, uh, go to... Um, www.ianjamescorlett.com um, and you'll see basically you know whatever is happening uh, I don't I don't get it updated all the time but you'll certainly get an idea of where what I'm working on and what I'm doing and there's an email address to contact me and for any of you people who uh, who have kids or um, have friends who have young kids um, I have written a book that is uh, available on Amazon and in your local uh, Barnes & Noble, etc., called E is for Ethics. So it's a totally different part of my life from uh, from voice acting, but it's, uh, it's a family book for uh, parents to read with their kids that uh, opens up fun conversations on kind of uh, difficult topics to, to talk about, uh, values and ethics and morals, but it's not all heavy. It's actually really fun and kids like it and uh tell your friends and buy a book didn't you just announce this morning on your twitter about the new book 
Yes, yeah, I got a new uh, book deal, and it's the the follow up to this book. Um, so this one was is titled E is for Ethics. The new one is called E is for Environment, and it um, it uh, features the same two characters. And uh, we're actually in development um, with uh, Playhouse Disney Canada uh, to make an animated series called Elliot and Lucy, based on these two characters as well. So uh-huh. if all goes well, we'll they'll be on the small screen in another year or so. Cool, cool. Very yeah. So. That's what I'm up to. Yep. All right. We would like to thank Mr. Corley for taking the time to chat with us in this special Beast Unleashed All Things Transformers interview. Hold the line in, and we will be right back after this. Hey, this is Cheetor, and you're listening to the Beast Unleashed podcast, Ultra Gear. Wow. That was awesome. Oh, yeah. Yeah. That was awesome. Um... And I gotta apologize to you. I know this is the first interview you actually got for us. I didn't mean to kind of run all over it with the questions. <laughs> That's fine. It's one of those things where I think it's because Cheetor is my favorite character. And, you know, Ian said it himself in the interview when he's done with his work, he likes to just get out of there. Um,. And honestly, before you even, you know, I was actually, my I almost my jaw dropped and I almost fell out of my chair when you told me that you had uh, found him on Twitter and, uh, and uh, sent him a message and for an interview and all that stuff because he is one of those people where he, he said it himself again in the interview that he, he's only been to like three or four conventions. He's not a Transformers voice actor that is that deep in the fandom like Gary Chalk, like David Kay, like Scott McNeil. However, he's still awesome as hell. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that was just awesome. Yeah, it was still a super awesome privilege to get him on. Yes, that was very, very, very cool. Um, Yeah, just very, very cool. I don't know what else to say. (laughs) <laughs> it's like one of those things where I, I think it's because he voices one of my favorite characters, which is Cheetor, that is just like speechless. It's like if we ever, which I highly doubt we'll ever have this, but if we ever got Judd Nelson on here, uh, you probably would, would hear nothing but silence from me in the outro. Kind of like what you're hearing now, but it's just like... Uh, 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 you know, something like that. Mm-hmm. Oh, just wow. That that was. Yep, I can, I can definitely, uh, you know, not blame you on that one. Um, you know, he's just a really, really nice guy. He's into everything. Um, you know, oh, yeah. He's touched a lot of shows that I've watched in the past. He's touched a lot of shows and stuff, but it's just not... It's, he's, you know, he even said it himself, he's not your average voice actor interviewee because, I mean, yes, he's done a lot of voices and stuff, but as he said, it, it you know, at the end of the day, he wants to go home and, and, and leave work at work. and you know, um, Which is respectable. I mean, I can understand oh, yeah. that. Oh yeah, very much so. Uh, you know, but he's he's just a, a, a joy t- to have talked to him. Uh, you know, and it's funny. I said in the interview to him, you know, uh, when you know, I know what Tidor sounds like. You know, I know what Doctor Wiley sounds like. Um, and I was wondering how close his own voice was to, to any of his characters. And I thought, you know, a lot of voices, as I said in the interview, and I'm sorry for everybody listening to this that I'm repeating myself from what I said in the interview, but I just have to, I'm trying to rationalize it here. Um, you know, people like David Kay, like like um, Tom Kenny, they change their actual voice from, you know, for characters. Ian, he is Cheetor. <laughs> he even so he he even went yeah I, yeah I know <laughs> you know but it's just his his natural voice is Cheetor's voice and that that's just awesome yeah that that was really really cool to hear yes um 
So this has been, uh, well, I should say, do you have any other thoughts? I've kind of been running the whole thing here. And um, I, I can honestly say before going back into Beast Wars this time around for, you know, our review podcast, um, I kind of not really, I mean, I liked Cheetor, but I didn't really, like, pay that much attention to him. But the more I watch it, the more he stands out to me. Yeah. The more I like the, that particular character. I mean, of course, Megatron is my favorite, but as far as Maximals, I pretty much like just about all of them. The only one I can't really stand is, I think, Silverbolt. See, I like Silverbolt. Silverbolt ha- has his moments. Uh, yeah, that's true. Uh, you know, and and I'm and we can get into this further later down the line. Um, I don't want to really bring no. to it up in this interview outro, but but yeah, I mean, you know, I I've said this tons of times before. Cheetor is the character throughout the entire series, and I don't just mean Beast Wars or then later Beast Machines. I mean the entire era where he has the most character development, plot driving stuff. Like, I would say, when we first see him in the first episode, before we even see him, I would say Cheetor in his original mold, in his original, you know, Cheetah uh, thing, I would say he's probably between 10 and 12. When he hits Transmetal 1, I would say he's around 15, 16, maybe 17. When he hits Transmetal 2, I would say, and this is just me, you know, just throwing this out there, I would say he's about 21 or 22. And then when he goes to Beast Machines, he, he's at least easily 30 years old. Because of all the character growth that he has had, all three seasons of Beast Wars, both seasons of Beast Machines. Yeah, he's had quite a bit of character development. Probably, I would have to say between him, Primal, and Megatron have had the most over the entire series. But yep. probably Cheetor has had the highest amount of character development. Oh, yes. Yes. So, uh, again, this has been the Beast Unleashed interview of Ian James Corlett, voice of Cheetor. Uh, join us next time when we will be... Um, uh, it'll be episode 9... Uh, and we will be doing our uh, final three episodes uh, Before the Storm uh, and Other Voices Parts 1 and Part 2 so we'll see you next time later